Blair, let's get over to Singapore. Joining us from there is Peter Elston. He's head of Asia Pacific Strategy and Asset Allocation at Aberdeen Asset Management. Peter, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Okay, okay so what has been Morning behind you. the dollar's rise so far this year? Or should I say just the last month? Well, exactly. It, it is just the last month. Prior to, uh, to that, the, uh, the U.S. dollar had been uh, weakening, presumably because uh, of uh, uh, QE and, and what that does for, uh, uh, for the dollar. Um, more recently, I suspect uh, the dollar has been strong on the back of uh, uh, expectations of a stronger economy. But uh, it, it's really not going to last um, as far as uh, markets are concerned. Uh, if markets have been rising on the back of... Uh, an expectation of better growth, then uh, that, that, I think, is absolutely wrong. And you really want to be getting out of uh, equities right now. Oh, really? Okay. And where do you shift your money to is one part of my question. But I just want to also get your views to, well, what about the economic data? Because uh, we've also got the Federal Reserve saying that things are looking better than they thought a short while ago here as well. Many people have been upping their forecast for growth in the U.S. But you say it's not uh, going to last. Absolutely. It's not going to last. Uh, we're not looking at uh, strong growth. Uh, the, the, the Fed is saying that growth is, is better than, than, it, than it was, but that doesn't mean it's, it's good. Uh, the, the, the key to this, this year is, is all about uh, inflation. Uh, we're finally starting to get it. I'm not talking about oil prices here. I'm talking about uh, unit labor costs rising at very, very rapid rates. And ultimately, it's unit labor costs. And we're talking about the U.S. here, but it's unit labor costs that, that, uh, that drive uh, inflation. Uh, two years ago, they were, they were falling by 3%. Uh, They're now rising by 3%. Uh, uh, and, uh, and this will eventually feed into, um, feed into inflation. And growth is still very weak, uh, whether you're looking at coincident indicators or, or leading indicators. Uh, you've got weak growth. And ultimately, what are we talking about? We're talking about a very stagflationary environment. And that's you know, that's an environment where you, you can't have QE because QE is designed uh, to address deflation. Well, with that in mind, I mean, Ben Bernanke doesn't see a problem when it comes to uh, price stability. Yeah, well, I think he's being very disingenuous. He said earlier in the week that long-term inflation expectations were stable. That is blatantly wrong. Inflation expectations uh, implied by the, uh, the tips market have risen from about 1.7% uh, in September, October last year, to 2.4% uh, as, of, as of yesterday. I mean, that's a rise of 50%. That's, uh, that's not uh, stable inflation expectations to me. Uh, all right. Okay, well, is it then a policy, okay, if you say he's being disingenuous, is it a policy not just by, of course, him, but some of the other central bank governors uh, around the world and central bank presidents of a policy of benign neglect to inflate your debts away at the end of the day? Absolutely. The last people you're going to hear from about rising uh, inflation expectations are, are the central banks in that uh, ultimately... Uh, this is all about the need of uh, governments to inflate away their massive long-term fixed uh, liabilities. And the only way they're going to be able to, to pay them off uh, is by uh, deflating them away through, uh, through inflation. And that is what is now starting to happen. Okay, let's also just uh, have a look at one other aspect uh, in all this, and that is, well, it's a chief aspect of what you were talking about, is inflation. Now, I had a guest on the other day, Paris Xena, who claims that actually if you take some of the old measures of inflation, we already have a serious problem in the U.S. What do you make of that? Uh, a, a serious inflation problem in the U.S., do you mean? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Uh, you know, there were some numbers out uh, last night, the Empire uh, Fed um, survey showing that the, uh, the prices paid leapt from, I think it was around 20 to 50. That's a diffusion uh, index. Uh, the PPI was showing uh, a rise of 0.4% month on month. Okay, that was um, pretty much in line with, with expectations. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, across the board now, you're starting to see these, these inflation measures uh, tick up. And, um, you know, Bernanke again was, I think, a little bit in disingenuous uh, with his statement when he talked about oil prices. Yes, uh, oil prices uh, 
just uh, just adds to the worry and they may well be temporary but ignoring these these core inflationary pre pressures relating to to unit labor costs I uh, uh, I, I think is uh, well as I said disingenuous very Peter also okay we've well, one of our top stories is uh, Beijing coming in and buying US Treasuries once again and if you if you're right in what you're saying at the moment with an inflation problem here or just around the corner surely this is about the worst time to be buying fixed income assets in the US particularly government debt absolutely absolutely I, 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 I don't know why the, the, the Chinese right now are buying US treasuries uh, they've been uh, reducing their holdings um, generally over the last uh, I think year or so, uh, you know, it may well be related to the fact that this is a U.S. Uh, election year. Who knows? But the fact is that uh, U.S. long-term bonds, uh, government bonds generally of, of developed markets are an appalling uh, investment. Um, they've been returning about uh, five and a half, six percent in real terms for the last uh, ten 20 years uh, as, as inflation has, uh, has gradually fallen over that time. Um, but those days are over. Um, there's no way that government bonds uh, uh, should be returning 6% in real terms. Um, if you look at where we were before the crisis, um, you know, unit labor costs were rising at the same rate that they're rising now, but 10-year uh, yields were a good sort of 200 basis points above where they are now uh, and that's potentially where where we should be arguably and and then once you once you factor those sorts of rates uh, into your equity valuation model uh, yeah. then you'll appreciate that actually equities aren't cheap Peter just out of time but uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this morning thanks a lot Peter Elson thank you. from Aberdeen Asset Management